Hello, and welcome to Pickle TV. I'm your host, Amanda Kowski. I'm Gary's daughter, and I'm here visiting family, and Gary's asked me if I would host some episodes of Pickle TV, so here I am. Now, if you found our show on Facebook, YouTube, or any other video sharing site, please check out our website at www.pickle.tv. It's the place to find all the videos Gary will record from all the conferences he will attend. And if you like this show and these conferences, please tell your friends about Pickle TV. You may also think about subscribing if you really like it. Now in this episode, I'm going to bring you another speaker from the Emerging Tech Conference that was held in Dallas, Texas during June of 2012. If you're not familiar with the Emerging Tech Conference, you should really check out their website at www.etcdallas.com. On this episode, I bring you Rob Holmes. His presentation is Brand Protection and Social Media. Let's watch it now. What I'm here to talk about is trademarks. And trademarks are very important in your online identity. And now what I want to do is kind of just give you guys an idea of who I am and why I'm here. Um, I started my company, IB Cybercrime, uh, in 2001, actually about a month after 9-11. Um, and it was, it was founded by me. It's a family business. I was also lucky enough to be around. And when I say all this stuff, I'm not trying to be a braggart. I happen to be the forest Gump of private investigators. I just happened to be at the right place at the right time in, this, in the history of this industry, and I just was dumb enough to say yes. Um, but I was around during the, the, the enacting of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. A lot of the, a lot of the initial cases that went into that lobbying was, was cases that I worked. Anti-Cyber Squatting Piracy Act, eBay Zero program, and how you can do takedowns on eBay. Well, that was something that Microsoft and I worked on together in the 90s to get enacted. Um, also, um, you ever hear about um, uh, website operations being taken down by the thousand domains? Well, I worked the first case of those too, and it was Chanel versus George Crispin. Louis Vuitton versus Akinok. This case right here, Chloe versus Trade Key, is going on right now. And the, other, the guy on the other side of that is Zuckerberg's attorney. I can't wait to be cross-examined that. Um, uh, yeah, and I, I conducted a lot, of the, a lot of the first intellectual property investigations online. Back in 95, I got a case called eBay. I didn't realize I was investigating an eBay seller. I thought I was investigating some website called eBay. So it's, it's funny, just to kind of, like I said, I really far as jumped my way through this career of mine. And um, where did I come from? Well, this is kind of neat because she said that I was uh, raised in a family of private investigators. Well, my dad was a former New Jersey State Trooper, and he was the guy that was at the swap meets and the flea markets and Canal Street, New York City back in the day, in the 80s and 90s, confiscating the Rolex watches, the handbags, and all that kind of stuff. I actually conducted, I did conduct my first trademark investigation at the age of 12. It was an MTV t-shirt, and I got paid in ice cream. I get paid a little bit more than that now, but, um, and I don't take ice cream anymore. Uh, but this is kind of neat because this is the first time um, my dad was mentioned in the press. This is the Atlantic, the Philadelphia Inquirer, 1983. I was on that radio. So it's just kind of neat. You know, I like to show people like, oh wow, you know, my, my lineage goes back, and this is why it is my passion, why trademarks are my passion. And that's why I kind of get out of the way. I'm not here to talk about pirated music or anything like that, but about trademarks and brands. Okay, personal branding. Now I'm a small businessman, and I know people, first of all, I gotta I gotta point out a couple elephants in the room here. I mean, you got Giovanni Gulucci, who is pretty much my social media idol. Okay, everything this guy does, I do. Okay, you see that logo at the bottom there? Not only did it come from a picture he took of me four years ago, but it's the same artist that he uses on his. Okay, so there you go. Um, but personal branding is a major is a major thing for a small businessman. So again, you know, my uniqueness to this group is that not only do I help large companies protect their brands. But I've had to brand myself for the 11 years, for these last 11 years, and I'm continu continuing to do a pretty good job of it. Now, what to consider for your own personal online brand? Okay, first of all, you need a handle, right? A name. And I told you mine was Holmes Pi. Where did I get that from? Well, my name's Holmes. 
and I love that TV show, <laughs> right? <laughs> and that's where I came up with Holmes P.I. Which okay. one is you? <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> there was a day when maybe we would have been confused. Um, now, the key to thinking of this is, that, okay, now that you have a handle, you have an idea, you have to think, is it unique? Okay, is it unique? Is someone else using it? You know, it's kind of two different, almost the same thing. But I mean, the thing is, is that is someone using your brand? Right? I'm not a search engine expert. I'm not a social media expert. I'm an enthusiast. But the thing is, I don't have the time to market a name that someone else has. You know, I don't have the ability to, the, to do that or the money to hire someone like Giovanni when I can just copy him online and be a cheap version. <laughs> steal. He said steal. Exactly. Be a cheap version of your heroes. Um, but, uh, and you know, does it transcend your job or location? The reason I say this is because you ever have, you ever, you ever decide like, okay, I work at this great company, what if you call yourself Bobby IBM? And then five years later, after you've worked at branding your handle, you decide you're gonna work for HP. You've gotta rebrand yourself at that point. Now with me, I did put my profession in the title because it does define me because I grew up in that. That's, that's gonna be my career for, until I wouldn't lie. But um, is the dot com taken? That's the first thing I do. You know, you go to all the different social media first, see if the dot com is taken. Okay, if the dot com is not taken, start moving on to something else or start, start moving on to, to the other social media. Um, and with your online handle, you're probably not going to file a trademark. Okay, just a fact. I mean, usually it's somewhat descriptive, um, and I'll get into that a little bit later. My personal branding for Facebook. Again, this is what I did. And this is my this is my personal brand, my personal Facebook page. But of course I do put this is me on the news, I just put something on there so people know it's I'm a business guy too. But you see it's Facebook.com slash Holmes PI. Okay? And you can do that with Facebook and with Twitter and all these other websites. And the key is to have the same handle on everything. Because you know how many people the, the first the first Holmes PI that I got was .com and AOL. This was early, <laughs> very early 2000s. And my personal email still kind of is Holmes PI at AOL, even though it's connected to my Gmail account and I just received them there. Um, but you know, Holmes PI happened to not be taken on anything. And here's the nice thing about that is that not only was it not taken on all of these social net, social platforms, but because I took it all, it's almost like obscurity by conquer. You're going to have, unless you have a copycat, you're not going to have someone else, you know, go on Corked or Squidoo and take your handle on these obscure websites because, you know, they, they don't have it on anything else. So that was my strategy here. And you see here again, LinkedIn.com slash IN slash Holmes PI. So you see, I'm trying to establish an online handle. So then if, because as an investigator, if I want to find you and I know your, 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 your AOL address is Holmes PI at AOL, I'm going to say, hmm, maybe he uses that handle on LinkedIn. So as a customer, <coughs> I think, oh, you know what? If the company's called, you know, Coca-Cola, maybe they're Facebook.com slash Coca-Cola or whatever. So that brand being close to your .com, if not exactly your .com, is important if you can get it. Now, company brand, and again, this all wraps together. All right, again, what to consider? Is it unique? Is the word mark descriptive? Is someone else using it? And with your company name, you probably will file a trademark. You probably will want to. And again, not only am I here to talk about my successes, but also mistakes that I made. You know, I'm an investigator. I work with trademark attorneys all the time. Trademark attorneys pay me for my advice. I must be smarter than them, right? No. I filed my own trademark, okay, for IP cybercrime. It was rejected because it was descriptive. IP, intellectual property, cybercrime. It happens to be what I do. So you can't file something that is too descriptive. So again, but I do have a handle. And I, it's not filed as a trademark. And see, this is, this is my online handle. This is my online brand for my company. Okay, and I chose IP Cybercrime. And I also chose this too, trying to be forward thinking back in 2003. I said, okay, what do I do for a living? 
how can I create? And it was funny because I actually, with, as far as the trademark is concerned, that was the only mistake I've made, but I think I actually did myself a service because I'm almost creating a generic word here because it does describe what I do very well and it wasn't coined before I coined it. So you'll find when you Google the term IP cybercrime now, you'll see the FBI using it and things like that. So even though I can't own the word because it's too descriptive, it still gives me some, you know, gives me, me some kind of foundation in the industry. So there's an upside to making mistakes. Some of them attribute to you, by the way. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's nice to know. Maybe it'll get me out of the ticket. <laughs> um, okay. Now, what is IP cybercrime? And this is like I said, I had to figure out how to coin a phrase. I was a small businessman with a market that was getting larger and larger because IP is becoming more important. Um, I had to figure out, okay, how do I make myself unique? Well, I decided to invent a word and brand myself as the person who invented that word. And here you go. And this is basically, uh, I created this definition. It's a violation of trademark, patent, or copyright law utilizing internet technology in part or in whole. And you can see here, these are just, these are just areas where, where people can infringe on someone else's IP online. You have counterfeiting, like the watches and the handbags, which is most of my industry. Uh, peer to peer file sharing, which I'm a lot less involved in. Cyber squatting, which is trademark domain names and things like that, which I do work a lot in. Theft of trade secrets is getting bigger and bigger. You'll find people, no kidding, I have cases where someone will be tweeting a photo from a million dollar photo shoot, Vanity Fair photo shoot, and that tweeted photo is now stolen property. And we have to find out who the person is so we can kindly ask them to take it down, which is what we always do. We're not, like, my company, and actually in 2009, Venture Beat wrote an article about me saying that I kill piracy with kindness. Because I don't believe in threatening people. I really do believe in kindly asking people to not do things. And I'd say nine times out of ten, if you ask someone the right way, they're going to do it. You know, and it's just one of those things. Especially because in that world, you're dealing with fans. <laughs> You know, you're not dealing with criminals, you're dealing with bad. But anyway, um, and rights of publicity too, which also go into some of the tweeted photos and things like that. But see, that was coined by me in 2003, and, it, and then, so that was about nine years ago, I decided to lay the foundation for that, uh, that handle. So now, I had to decide on a, on a website platform. So what did I do? First thing I did, and it wasn't like I said, oh, WordPress was the best one. I said, which one has a dummies guy? <laughs> okay, I, I drove to Barnes and Noble, and I said, "Okay, this Joomla book's this thick, and you know, I didn't graduate college, um, but WordPress had a dummies guide." Okay, in a weekend, in a weekend, I had a blog. My blog knockoff report, which I'll show you a little bit later, um, is on WordPress.com, which is hosted by WordPress. And my company website, I use what people refer to as WordPress.org, which is a self-hosted website, which is a lot more functional. Both have their great uses. But anyway, I had to figure out, okay, now I have to get a website up. And I used, and I know Copy Blogger Media creates, uh, they create Genesis, the WordPress theme. That's the one I use. And I'll tell you, I'm not a web designer. And this website looks as good as any of my competitors. And I do all this myself. Um, oh, and also, just because of branding, I want to let you guys know, um, this uh, logo here, see it's an IP investigator. There's an I and a P, there's a detective in there. That, and a lot of the branding you're gonna see, I did employ help. There's actually someone that used to live in Dallas, a marketer named Kat Rice. Um, she goes by Vera Batum on Twitter. Um, she actually helped me uh, with a lot of the fine tuning of my branding back in like, uh, like 2010 and 2011. So, um, but yeah, so you'll see here, this is what I did. And I did all this myself. All this work I did myself. I'm not a programmer, but I can move things around and see what, what does what, like most of us can. We all had Legos when we were kids, you know. Okay, facebook.com slash IP cybercrime. Now, this is not a Facebook profile. This is a Facebook page. Slightly different. But also, I had to make sure I branded myself on Facebook. Are you going to use Facebook every day? Maybe, maybe not. But as, you know, as these social media marketers tell you, you gotta be there first, and you gotta be able to say what you're gonna say before someone else says it. Um, this again, even though I tweet from my personal Twitter account, I still have, like I lay the foundation here so I can have some followers, right? 
but it says here, you know, IP Cyber Crime is a boutique firm providing top rated investigations for brand owners and their attorneys. And my only one tweet I have up there, and it just says for our updates, please follow our official blog, Knockoff Report, at Knockoff Report, or our founder, founder and CEO, at Holmes PI. So even though I have this up here, it's really not for much except that I'm, again, laying the foundation for my online brand. Um, LinkedIn also has a place where you can create a page for your company, and I highly suggest to do that. Okay? Um, you can, and it says right here, like, there are only three people that work in my company. I work for some of the world's largest brands, and it's me, my wife, and my brother. Okay? Um, but it's three of us. But anyway, when it says, like, so and so works at this company, there's a link there to the, to the LinkedIn page if you make it happen that way. So there's so many ways, and I'm not, again, I'm not a social expert, I gotta follow these experts, but these guys are always talking about linking into other things and making sure you link into your company and your website. So that's what I do, I follow their advice. Um, now, for my publication, and this is where it's really neat because I started this blog in 2008, before some of these gods like, like Tony and, and the Tony Wright and, uh, and, and uh, Sean Jackson start talking about content, how important content was. You know, they were talking about it back then, but there was no word for it. You know what I mean? Then I started seeing how these guys are like, wow, words, paragraphs that you type are actually just as important, if not more important, than posting, you know, hey, I'm at Starbucks or whatever. You know what I mean? You actually have to write things, useful things about what you do. So then I said, what can I do here? Okay, I'm going to come up with another brand. I love the Drudge Report. Why don't I come up with something that's like the Drudge Report, but for knockoffs? Oh. So, um, again, I had to think, is it unique? Is the word is, is the word mark descriptive? Again, if you want to trademark it, you're going to have to decide whether you, whether you want to be descriptive or you want to trademark it. If you have a website called Zazzy, it's a lot easier to trademark than knockoff report. Um, and you probably will want to file a trademark if you monetize it. And again, this is a decision I made. Um, but knockoff report was why I decided because it's a knockoff of the Drudge Report. <laughs> okay, this is my blog. Again, this is a WordPress.com blog, the WordPress hosted. And I prefer this for the same reason. Now, now with WordPress.com versus a self-hosted WordPress, this is what I'll tell you. You know, I have friends that can, can change their own oil and fix their car and things like that. And those cars run a lot faster than my Prius, right? But there's a safety of having that Prius that you can just jump in and you know it's going to just drive and you're not going to have to put your hands under the hood. Well, that's kind of what, this is the website that I tinker with every day, and this is knockoff report based on WordPress.com. So there, there's a lot less functionality, but it's secure, and if I make a mistake, the website's not going to go down. So those are the reasons I kind of picked the self-hosted for the company site where I needed more functionality and uh, the dot com for my publication. And you see what I do is I just post the headlines every day. Because of copyright infringement, I can't republish someone else's material, but I can link to their material. Mm -hmm. So I have Google Alerts, and this is something really neat from someone who's trying to create content, uh, generate content about their industry. I have a long Google search string, you know, knockoffs, or counterfeit, or, you know, and I just have this really long, long uh, Google search string in Google Alerts. Every night around 11 o'clock, I get a list, and every two days, so I have two alerts. Every two days, so Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I, I post links up there to all the headlines that I think are worth it. Obviously, it's not automated, where I would just have any link that comes up in that search, because some of these stories, you know, there's, there's 20 of the same story. So I always link to the best one. If it's in Sacramento, I want the Sacramento Bee covering it. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. So you curate the news. But anyway, that's what I do for my industry. I get about 1,000 people a week that read it. It's not like a massive website. But you know what? In an industry of 10,000, maybe 20,000, if you talk about people part-time in my industry, you know, it's a decent enough group of people where when I go to conferences, they can say, oh, you do not offer report. Um, 
And uh, see so you here, facebook.com slash knockoff report. Again, it's a Facebook page versus profile. And again, it's the same as the dot com. I can't stress that enough. If, the dot, if, the, if what you have as a dot com is not taken, that's your first choice, always. Again, knockoff report on Twitter. And here, I do tweet from here. Most of my tweets, even knockoff report tweets, are in my personal just because I want to keep my Twitter followers there, you know, and it's one of those things where who knows what's, what works, but, you know, we're all experimenting. But I do have a Twitter page for this, my dog. And actually, Chris here communicates with my dog on that. Um, he's no David Berkowitz, though, but he does. He does, um, he does interact with some of my interesting posts. Um, my dog's name is Chauncey. Named after, have I ever seen the Peter Sellers movie being there? Yeah. Chauncey Gardner. He was really the first Forrest Gump, by the way. But, uh, but anyway, my dog's named Chauncey Gardner Holmes. Um, but, so Chauncey Holmes. Believe it or not, Chauncey Holmes was taken. So again, what did I do? And this is why I have this up here as an example, because my first choice was taken. Chauncey Holmes by some dude in Britain, you know, with a name like that, Chauncey Holmes. I mean, that's pretty British. But, um, so I went with Holmes Chauncey. I, I checked and I made sure. I don't think I secured the .com on this because it wasn't something I was thinking about at the time and I actually don't know if it's taken. But I did check Facebook and Twitter to see if they were taken and secured those right away because they were where I was going to be on the most. And Chauncey does tweet. We have a um, photo shoot every once in a while. A pictures with him and his brother Lucky. Uh, and he's got a Twitter page too. Oh, and this is what I put on the tagline is, every dog has his day, this one has a Facebook page. And then the same about Twitter up here. But yeah, Chauncey, he'll, he'll do anything. You just hold him up and put something on him, rock band, guitar, or whatever, and he'll just sit there. So we just see all the stupid things we can make him do. Um, now, trademarks. And this is where it kind of gets into the official concept of trademarks. And again, this was all the, the creative process. Now you have an idea, you have a brand, whether it's a large company or not. Um, now, what do you do, okay? First, what is a trademark? And this is why I love being in the trademark business, even though I do help people who have you know, patent issues and copyright issues. It's not my passion. And because the thing is, is it trademarks, going back 2,000 years, trademarks identify the manufacturer of a product. That's what trademarks are for. So that when you buy a product, you know who made it. It's as simple as that. I mean, yes, there are ways to monetize that concept, but that's the purpose of a trademark, okay? And that's why trademarks are important. Um, so for example, like there were, there were blacksmiths in the Middle Ages who actually had not only a trademark from, from the local jurisdiction that would say it was safe, because you know that UL mark you see on things? That's a registered trademark. And Underwriters Laboratories in Illinois has to test a product to say it's safe for that trademark to be on there. People counterfeit that trademark. Um, so you also know that something's been certified. But anyway, those blacksmiths would not only have that certification trademark from, from the jurisdiction, but they would also have their own trademark on there so you know that this thing isn't going to break in battle because my last one did. You know what I mean? Same reason when you drink Dr. Pepper, I mean, we're all Texans, you know, but, um, you know, when you drink a Dr. Pepper, you know you didn't die last time you drank one, so drinking another one, it's the same concept with trademark. Um, also brand, and this is why I interchangeably use the word trademark and brand. Because a brand, and these are just the first sentence of Wikipedia here, you know, but, you know, brand is a name, term, design, symbol, or any other feature that identifies one seller's good or service as distinct from other sellers. So you can see how they're, they're literally the same thing. Um, and um, I don't know if anybody here reads Interbrand or uh, Business Week, bless you. But uh, Business Week once a year puts out the internet top global brands. Because brands are, like people say, you know, um, a lot of marketing people say people don't buy products, they buy brands. Um, the, the world's most global brands are words and pictures this big. Um, and brand protection is just the act of preventing someone else from illegally making and selling a product using that brand name owned by another company. So again, the primary goal and the primal goal of this is determining the origin of content or product. Now, there are three different trademark symbols. Um, <clears throat> there, there, there's the unregistered trademark, the unregistered service mark, and the registered trademark. Now, 
A lot of people ask this question because you see this on everything. You, you'll either see a TM, an SM, or you'll see an R with a circle around it. Okay? Now the difference between, now the TM and the SM I'll get into in a minute, but the difference between a registered trademark and that TM is anybody can put a TM next to anything. It just means that I'm claiming the rights to this word or this picture. It doesn't mean you have the rights and any government entity decided that. It just means that, hey, just letting you know, and you know, in this in the business we call that notice. You you basically you put people on notice that you're claiming this name as yours. Someone else may come along and say, sorry, I've been using it longer than you, but at least you're claiming the right. With knockoff report, it's funny, again, I always think I'm smarter than these attorneys, but then they call me and give me advice and I'm like, so glad I know these guys, but I had a knockoff report, and um, after I published that, I had a friend call me up and he said, hey, you better put a TN next to knockoff report. I was like, really? He goes, yeah. So um, I did that right away. He's like, I can charge 600 bucks an hour. You better do it. I'm giving you free advice. Okay, okay. Um, but um, that's the difference. It's notice. If you don't put that next to your mark, it's almost like you're leaving your property abandoned on the curb. Okay, I have a client just recently, and not a client, someone I referred to someone else actually, but she designed shoes. And she was selling to a major chain, and the chain decided to knock her shoes off. Well, the first, and this is a customer of hers. And, you know, this is again, this is attorney, the attorney needs to help her with this. But the first thing I said to her, from an advice standpoint, because I come in after the attorney, but um, from an advice standpoint, she got referred to me for, as a friend of a friend. I said, um, I said, do you have notice on your website? Do you have copyright or TM next to anything? No. Okay, well, you have to do that first because without that, you gave them permission to take it. It's like, like I said, if you leave if you leave a couch on the curb, legally it's considered abandoned. I'm a private investigator. I take people's trash all the time, you know? And I know the laws. And it's mine, it's anybody's if it's at the curb, you know? So the same thing, if you don't put notice, um, you're allowing, you're basically saying that anyone can take it. Um, the nice thing is you have the power to give notice because you don't have to go through this growing process right away. You're going to want to down the road if you're going to start making money off the product, but you can put a TM next to your idea. You know, you notice like, I, I saw like Capriati's is a new sandwich shop that opened up in Plano, which I love by the way. Thank you. But, it, you know, um, but, Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, what, she's from Jersey too. She, you know, it's it's good sandwiches. Yeah. People in Jersey live and die by the quality of sandwiches. Um, yeah, it's Joey. Um, yeah. So, but um, but Capriati's, you'll notice on their menu, you'll see they have a, and I think this is like overbranding in a way, but every sandwich has a cool name to it. But you'll see some of them. It's a good example. Some of them have a TM and some of them have an R, which means some of them are registered trademarks with the U.S. Patent Trademark Office, and some are just marks that they claim, but haven't gotten permission to put the R on Okay. Now, trademarks can be almost anything, and this is, oh yes? Well, what's SM? Oh, I'm sorry. SM is a service mark, and I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, the difference is, on a state level, before interstate commerce was so common, like we now, we drive to Oklahoma and do work and things like that. So most of the time, you're gonna want a federal with the federal, you're gonna wanna file with the federal government, U.S. Patent Trademark Office. But in the day, and I'm talking even just as far back as the 90s, near as the 90s, a lot of people filed for a state trademark, okay? And with, with the states, and you can still do that, by the way. You can, you can file with the Secretary of State. You can file a state trademark, which gives you the right still to only use these, but at least you're on record having used the name in commerce. I'm glad you asked me. Now, the difference between TM and SM is simple. Um, you ever see like a plumber, and the plumber will, will have a logo, whatever it is, the drain surgeon, and it'll say SM? It's because it, it describes a service. Something that you can't, like see this is a trademark because I can show an example of a piece of, of an item that I'm selling. So this trademark is for, trademarks are, categor <coughs> are categorized by class. So if you have the trademark for Dr. Pepper in soda, someone else might have it for t-shirts. You don't, you know. So same with services and trademarks. A trademark 
is, is something on a physical good, and a service mark is differentiated by um, whether or not it's a, it's a concrete good or not. Um, so you can put this on. And, well, by yes. the way, I actually had a, a TM got on a, a pipeline for Oh, yeah, yeah. I got a call from the USPTO to say someone was trying to file that we didn't dispute that. Yeah, that happens yeah. all the time. So it was yeah. like, it had to be, because apparently well, they there are a Google query screen for it with the DM and see if someone's actually playing it online. Well, there's a clearance process, and I'll show you guys some of that, okay. too. Um, now, first, I want to define what trademarks can be. And now you can kind of see trademarks can be almost anything. Okay? That's a word. That's a trademark. Sure. I'm going to show you examples of each oh. one. Yeah, and I'll show you because it's pretty amazing, huh? Or, right, right. Now, this is the one that I typically, and in the branding process, it's your first stop, is your name. And this is what we talked about early on with my personal branding, is your name. Well, images can be trademarked and often are trademarked. Slogans, like you mentioned, slogans. Are trademarked. Patterns. Again, this is what you have to think of. If it identifies the manufacturer, if it identifies the origin of the product, it can be a trademark. Now, you have to go through a filing process, to, and this, the, the nation has to determine whether or not you can. But this right here is a trademark, and it's a pattern. Perfect. Typically, huh? Perfect. Yep, it's Burberry. Yep. And, and typically, patterns are copyrighted. But because this is their trademark pattern, they were able to get this passed. Colors. This color right here, it's called Robin's Egg Blue. It's basically, if you take the most expensive quality turquoise and polish it to perfection, that's the color. But it's Robin's Egg Blue. But Tiffany owns this color in jewelry, obviously in certain classes. But they own this color in a certain class, several classes, but just say jewelry, in that shape. They don't own that color for everything, but they have several shapes, which basically are the shapes of their boxes and their pouches. So even if I can actually, I can actually arrest someone for counterfeiting, even if it doesn't have the Tiffany words on the product anymore. Yes. We got a take down because we created several characters and we had our logo and we're that color and made some months. Right. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, so but this is these are all ways you can identify yourself. I want to see if it's white. Are you gay? No, but I'll go into that. <laughs> It's not playing. That's a THX sound, okay? The THX sound and also the NBC, you know, down, down, down. the NBC chimes were the first trademark, the first sound trademark to successfully get past. And the interesting thing about that is that it, it, it spawned other ideas like Harley Davidson. And you know, Harley Davidson gave up on that, by the way. Because, uh, oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, I didn't because there was so much hubbub in, in the, the 2000s about this that I had to look it up to see if they, because I didn't even know. But I'm sorry. So, with like the law and order sound, you know, the point, point thing that they do? As long as it identifies a product, their trademark attorneys could attempt to file that. Obviously, it has to go through the examination process, but yes, if it identifies a product, you could potentially, and again, your lawyers decide what might get passed and what's worth trying and what's not. But yeah, with the Harley Davidson um, sound, it was very interesting. Harley has a distinct sound, their engine, okay? And they wanted to trademark the sound, and no kidding. Potato, 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 potato. They want to be able to trademark that sound, okay? But, oh, and that's, that is how they describe it in court. Their attorneys said that. Potato, 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 potato. <laughs> okay, that's how when you idle the engine, that's what it sounds like. Huh? Is there a video of that out of the I don't know. I'm sure you can find it. But again, as I told him, I didn't follow it to the end. But I remember in 1994, the big announcement, Harley's doing their sound. I, that's when I remember it, when they announced it. And there was a lot of hubbub. But then it kind of went away from the news. And then, yeah, they weren't successful in trademarking a sound. But you can see now 
that anything can be trademarked if it identifies your product or if it identifies a manufacturer you need. Um, here are what's called secondary marks, okay? Secondary trademarks, now you see you have this brand here, right, Chanel, but then you see that you have number five, which is also trademark, Chance, Coca, Allure, they're all trademarks too. And within a company, they call that a secondary mark because it's not their primary. And it often does appear with their initial mark. And with this too, you see Zynga, and you have Farmville, Cityville, and these are also uh, trademarks. Um, now, the word mark, um, yeah, you see, this is what, I, I really do believe that everything begins and ends with a name. And again, I've been in the trademark business for so long, I've seen companies come and go, and the name is literally the most important thing. I mean, look at, look at uh, these companies that have to change their names when Tiger Woods, you know, has a, you know, whatever some of those companies are. But um, now, with social media, and I know we're getting close to the end here. Um, with social media, this again is just the first sentence from Wikipedia, but it's online content created by people using highly accessible and scalable <coughs> publishing technologies. Why Facebook? Because it's Studio 54. I don't know if I'm dating myself. I wasn't old enough to go to Studio 54, but I was old enough to see the Mike Myers film the in the 90s. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I had to, have to clarify that. Because I do use oil of a lead, but it's not that great. Right. No. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's just, it just happens to be where everybody is. That's why when you look at people like, like Patty Farmer and Gio and Lisa, you look at these guys, why, why are they on this obscure website that nobody's ever heard of before? Well, because it might be the next Twitter. You know what I mean? Why not be on there first, you know? And one thing, and this is also another interesting, this is, uh, this is Ruben and Zuckerberg here. These are the CEOs of both these two companies. You know, who knows if they're <laughs> related. Now, and this is why I mentioned, you know, Facebook happens to be just where everybody's at. But there are plenty of places where only the cool wine lovers go to. And, you know, just about every industry, even my industry, you know, the intellectual property industry tries to have their own little groups. And, you know, so every group, every industry tries to have their own little groups. But anyway, everyone happens to be on Facebook, but I'm gonna go through these slides and you're not gonna believe. I mean, just on QZone alone, this is, this is the Chinese social network. 536 million users. Twitter, 500 plus. I got these off of, um, off of Wikipedia. Um, they, they put the plus neck, 500 plus, and all, but you get the idea. Um, 330 million users just on Windows Live still. 310 million users on Tencent, which is another Chinese website. Owned by, that other one was owned by Tencent as well. They're basically the, the, the Facebook and Microsoft wrapped up in the one of China. Um, this is uh, this is Weeb uh, as a Cena. This is another one owned by Tencent. 300 million users. So you can see, uh, China has you know one and a half billion people already on social media. You know, um, and this is Halo. This is another foreign one. I forget. This was. It's one of the Latin countries. 230 million users. Google Plus. 170 million. Actually, I think I think Geo had a, a higher number than that. Uh, but it's it's a ton of people are on these sites. Yeah. It's tons of people are on these websites, and this is why you got to claim Badu, 151 million users. Contact, Russians, Russians Facebook, Russians Facebook, 145 million users. So when you think, Skype, again, they still have 100, 100 million users. Bebo was sold and lost by AOL, bought and sold by AOL, but they still have 117 million people. 100 million users on LinkedIn. And you can see, just on these social networks alone, you have over four billion users. So where's your brand going to be useful? I have no idea where it's going to be useful tomorrow. But the key is, when you see all the different places where people are using trademarks now, just within Facebook, you have all these different Zynga games just within there, using your Facebook handle. You know, I got a meeting with a big client because I played I play uh, uh, words with friends with them. It was just the way I happened to sidle up to them, you know, and happened to, you know, it was just one thing that led to another. But you can see that online handle means everything, even in the social world. Look at this, Best Buy, 
now has locations in Cityville. Okay? Uh, my wife, oh, this is the other thing that's kind of cool, because I do some work for this company, you know, and we always, you know, for research, try their products, you know, and, uh, and so my wife uses company funds for education purposes and plays Cityville, right? We're sitting there having our coffee in the morning, you know, just, that's the same reason I got the big Google television and all that stuff, you know, we all kind of, you know, but, um, you know, but <laughs> all my brothers, all, believe it or not, all my brother's Xbox stuff is all paid for by the company. That's it's awesome. Awesome. So there you go. No, but, but here's the interesting thing is that she's playing one morning, we're just having coffee, and she said, she said, oh, Best Buy just moved in. Before this, it was just called Rob's Coffee Shop, Rob's Electronic Shop. You just named it whatever you want. Now all of a sudden it's like, hey, do you want a Best Buy? And then the next month after that, do you want a Capital One? There wasn't a lot of e-commerce happening at the time, but they were actually paying for sponsorship to sponsor stores. Enrique Iglesias, about six months ago, had a concert in your city. That's nuts, but you can see, and now he's a brand. You know, and you can see that all this stuff is happening before our eyes, and these are brands, these are you guys, each one of you and all your clients. And this is something interesting too, this is right after uh, like Black Friday. You know, forget the turkey, 26% of those surveyed plan on shopping during Thanksgiving. You know, it's just amazing. And a lot of you guys, because you're social media folks, you know some of these numbers. Um, but you know, look at this, nearly three quarters of retailers will use our Facebook page to at least reach out to shoppers. You know, many of these guys, they talk about, you know, there's email marketing, there's everything, you know, there's Facebook, there's, you don't know how you're gonna get which customer. But nearly three quarters of retailers are going to use their Facebook page. Why aren't? Why don't you have a Facebook page? I have a friend that was an attorney that was like, "Why do I need one?" I'm like, "Well, you should. You know, why do you have a business card? You may go to a party and not hand one out, but you should have one in case someone asks. You know what I mean? It's the same type of deal. Um, and also, you know, this right here. You know, um, you know, there's a, a, a local startup called Shop Savvy that's hit it huge. You know, recently. Um, this, you know, this just kind of shows that people are using social media now to scan products. And this all links to, to their social, to a small social network that's based on their database. Social media will play a big role in consumer behavior. Again, these are all just numbers, but they're ideas. Now, clearing a word mark. I know we're kind of getting toward the end. But, um, but see, you look at this social media landscape here. Now, this is what I say. This is a quote. You can quote me on this. You can tweet it too if you'd like, but this is what I tell everybody. And I speak in front, and I do this talk, and I, I've changed a lot of this stuff, but I do a talk on trademarks and social media for IP lawyers. And I speak, I just spoke at the American Bar Associations, DC, the big DC conference, and I gave a lot of these slides. This is one of them. I always tell everybody, prevention, if effective, appears unnecessary. It's the same reason why you lock your door. How many people attempt to open your car door? Probably nobody, but the one person who does, the door's locked. It's the same thing with reserving your name on social media. And here's another smart person, a little smarter than me. But uh, no matter where you go, there you are. So again, <laughs> this is Confucius. You know, I mean, no matter where you go, there you are. You end up walking into a social media, a social media website. You better be there. You know, history is whoever resonates first, right? So you might as well be the first person who plants a flag on a specific social network. Now you can see these people, look, Isaac Hepworth grabbed Coke on Twitter before Coca-Cola did. How? There is no excuse for that on the planet, hmm. okay? Look at this, Shaquille O'Neal, someone had that. He had to use the real Shaq until he bought SHAQ. He had to buy this just recently. Now it says on there, it says, uh, or no, it says on this one, my new account is here. But you can see, where were this guy's lawyer, you know, uh, uh, his social media people? I mean, obviously, they were asleep at the job. The interesting thing is, Twitter, when did Twitter come out? I just got my five-year anniversary congratulations uh, uh, tweet this morning um, from Twitter, or from like Twit birthday or something, some weird site. But, so I've been on for five years, okay? So longer, I've had Facebook longer than Twitter thought of filing a friggin' trademark. So you can see, even the professionals, even the people who are creating these social networks with tens of millions of dollars are not thinking about this stuff right off the bat. Um, the USPTO, how much time do we have? Uh, two minutes, okay. 
Um, I'm going to go through this, but I'm, we're going to show these slides, and I'm always happy, as you guys can tell, I talk a lot, so it's no problem getting me talking later. But these are just examples, and I can show you guys later just of how to search for a trademark to see if it's taken. Okay, and this is on the U.S. Patent Trademark website, and I can show you some more detail later, but this is just one trademark that I happen to have that's filed. Lipat, and that's just one trademark that I have filed. Now, here's a website, I know these guys. I don't know them because they were buddies of mine before I met. This was because they created a product and I basically discovered them because I realized, you guys are marketing to social media people, why aren't you marketing to trademark work? And these guys ended up getting sold for $10 million because they created it. Yep. Are they gonna, are they, are, have, have they gotten into the social gaming stuff yet? I haven't seen it. Good question, I don't know. I just tweeted the strike out, I don't know if you brought that up. Right, no, no, good question, good question. Um, <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I mean, they're, they, these guys are, you know, right now they're doing, you know, the, the top 500 <coughs> popular search engine. There's a free account, by the way, where you can do it all for free. You can do it all for free, but you have to do it manually. So, um, you can see mine's Holmes PI, and you can see what I've taken, but you can also see I've only cleared 9% of them, because I'm lazy, and I'm cheap. 91% of those 575 I haven't even done yet. Um, now, this is how I end all my talks on this particular thing. Now, you think here, the internet is the information superhighway, right? Well then, social media are the sidewalks, the beaches, and the shopping malls. And that's just one thing I like to end people on. That's it. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed this week's session. Make sure to come back next week for another video from the Emerging Tech Conference. If you like what Pickle TV is doing, I would ask you to consider dildomains.com the next time you buy a domain name or website hosting. Dildomains.com is my daddy's GoDaddy reseller account, plain and simple. So if you like GoDaddy or if you use GoDaddy, please consider using Dildomains instead. In other words, buy your GoDaddy stuff from my daddy. Well, that's all for today. So until next week, this is your host, Amanda Kalski, saying goodbye and thanks for watching.